What's up guys? Today we're going to review the Femi X8 SE model. It's a 4K foldable drone versus the DJI Mavic. The Mavic is a pretty good price right now. It has dropped and it still has pretty decent video on there. It's really not a bad drone at all. It is reliable, but it's still in the $899 price point for a brand new one. So it's holding its value, but the Femi X8 SE model has just dropped in price. It's gone down to around $420 on Banggood. So I really want to compare these two today for you and see what you can get for around $400 foldable 4K drone these days. But let's get real about what you get for that $400. Now the 4K video looks pretty good and you get a decent max range of about five kilometers or three miles on the transmitter transmission. That's not the video transmission. It has an advertised flight time of 33 minutes, a real world flight time, in my testing of around 25 minutes so it is comparable to the flight time on the Mavic which is good news for you guys but what we all really want to know is what kind of camera do I get for my $400 price point well you get a nice field of view on this camera it's actually 78.8 degrees which means that the horizon is going to look nice and flat it's not going to have a lot of that GoPro fisheye look to your video and photos which is really nice and a really nice thing is the fact that it does have a Sony CMOS sensor inside at one half point three inch. So a uh, half inch sensor inside is a pretty decent size for this small of a camera. It's also shooting 12 megapixel photos, which is decent. It has an ISO range up to about 3200 for the video and 1600 for your stills and a, as fast as eight thousandths of a second for your shutter speed. So you can do this slow-mo or you can do super fast action shots. It has a max photo resolution of around 4,000 by 3,000 pixels and the max video resolution on this baby is 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. You can drop it down to 720p and do actually up to 200 frames per second which is not bad and we have universal image formats on here at JPEG and DNGs they work across Mac and PC and the video formats the same way it is mp4 which is great because those are compatible cross-platform you can use it on Mac or PC for your video editors the memory card type is going to be micro SD and they're recommending up to 64 gigabytes and they, they say that the SanDisk in the Kingston U3 is recommended and it has a max bit rate of 100 Mbps which is totally awesome now here's where it gets really interesting because these two drones look different but the camera gimbals are actually extremely similar in the specs I'm gonna bring up both of these specs on the screen here for you now this is really amazing because when I put both of these specs up side by side right here you can see there is a lot that is the same it's almost scary how much it's the same right here so the field of view is 78.8 degrees on both of these cameras absolutely the same the aperture is both f 2.2 and the sensor inside both these cameras is one half point three inch CMOS camera. They're both rocking a 12 megapixel still. They both have exactly the same ISO range from 3200 up to 1600 for the stills. And the shutter speed is the same from eight to eight thousandths of a second. The max photo resolution, absolutely the same again, 4000 by 3000 pixels. And also great news for people that wanna buy the Femi X8 SE versus the Mavic Pro is the fact that the Mavic Pro only has a slight leg up on the video Video, as far as the C4K is concerned, it's 4096 by 2160 at 24 frames per second. Whereas the standard 4K resolution on both of these cameras is exactly the same. It's 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second on both cameras. But the Femi X8 SE has a leg up on the Mavic Pro because check out at the very bottom of the SE specs, we have a max bit rate of 100 Mbps versus 60 Mbps on the Mavic Pro. So just a little faster bit rate on the X8 versus the Mavic Pro. So I guess the big question here is, is it really worth the extra $477 to get the extra features that the Mavic Pro has? Now let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison on the same day, relatively the same time frame, shooting with the X8 and the Mavic Pro, both on automatic camera mode. You can see that the X8 has a little more color saturation. The Mavic Pro is a little bit more muted, more browns. More blues are in the X8. You can see that off in the distance there, there's more haze. And the Mavic Pro seems to handle that up close a little bit better where the X8 seems to have a little more blue hue closer in than the Mavic Pro does. The Mavic Pro seems to handle a little bit of haze just a little bit better with a little less blue hue in the video. And for the close-up detail shots, both look very similar as far as the detail goes. But again, you can see the color variation on both of these different cameras are quite different. 
With so many similarities on the camera, the one thing that is different is the black bar on the front. It is not object avoidance, by the way. It's actually the sensor for your different tracking flight modes. On the Mavic Pro, you have those two dots in the very front that look like little cameras. Those are actually your object avoidance on the Mavic Pro from the front of the drone, not the rear. And while object avoidance is nice, it does not work outside of positioning mode on the Mavic Pro. So if you go into sport mode, don't expect to be able to stop when you come up to an object with the Mavic Pro. And for the SE model, they also redesigned the transmitter. It's just a little bit bigger than the Mavic Pro, but you get a longer flight time with this transmitter. It plugs into iPhone, Android, or even USB-C cables that come along with it, which I think is kind of cool. They include all that in the box. And also on the back side of the transmitter, we have the gimbal dial right there. And we also have a record button on this side. On the opposite side, we have the ISO dial, which is nice because you can change the aperture setting. And also you have a shoot button there just below that. Over here, we have where the USB plugs in and my lightning cable right there plugs into my iPhone. So it tucks back underneath, which I think is kind of cool. It lays out pretty flat and it does have detachable gimbal sticks, which I really, really like. Those tuck just inside the left hand side of the transmitter right there for storage. The Mavic Pro does not have that option. There are some pros and cons to the Mavic Air controller versus the X8. First of all, it does have a screen, which is great. That's a huge pro. It's also very compact and it's running OcuSync video and transmission back to your drone, which I think is better uh, than the X8. But we also have a physical sport button on the Mavic Pro controller, whereas the X8 remote does not have a physical sport button. You gotta go inside the app. It also folds out like this to accept any iPhone. Standard size larger phones will fit in this, but not a tablet. You'll have to buy a converter for that. Now, for the battery inside this remote, it is a short battery life, and I feel like it flies for like a, maybe a flight and a half before I have to recharge it. It's a 2970 milliamp in this one versus the x8 remote is actually a little bit bigger it's 3900 milliamp inside here and this goes far out enough that i can put an ipad air mini inside this remote so a little bit larger for accommodating larger devices that way i don't have to buy any type of converter for any of my larger devices or tablets also on the bottom of the X8, you'll notice that there's only one sensor for each of the optical flow system and the vision positioning system. Whereas on the Mavic Pro, you have two of each, one in the front and one in the back and two sensors in the very middle. Also, you have four feet protecting those sensors on the bottom of the X8 versus the Mavic Pro does not. It is completely exposed right there. If you hit a hard surface, you will damage those sensors. The X8 has a nice design feature. The teeth are on the bottom of the battery connects. When you snap it down, it's pushing down on it instead of being in the front of the battery like the Mavic Pro. When you click this one into place, there have been reports of some Mavics um, not being fully clicked and it actually falling out of the air. A nice thing about the Mavic Pro is they did include a gimbal lock and a complete gimbal cover for their gimbal, whereas the X8 only has a piece of foam on it, so you'll have to provide your own type of gimbal lock. Maybe you can do a 3D printed mount on the front to protect your gimbal in transit. Another advantage that the X8 has over the Mavic Pro is battery life. You do get a 25 minute flight time out of the X8 battery and the Mavic Pro battery will get you around 20 to 23 minutes on the average. This one is a 3S 4500 milliamp battery whereas the Mavic Pro is a little bit smaller. It's a 3S 3830 battery. And in my flight test today, the X8 was quieter than the original Mavic Pro props here. You can see those are bullnose, they're flat edged props on the very end. We found out over time that those are less efficient and they're also noisier. So you're going to get a little bit longer flight time out of a narrower prop. Sort of the uh, quieter prop of choice is something with a narrower tip. And both have very similar locking mechanisms on the bottom of the prop. They both have a three tooth twist lock configuration for each of the props. They're both the same diameter shaft and they're almost exactly the same. It's also been said that the Mavic Pro has less powerful motors than the new X8 motors. They also sit a little bit higher on the Mavic Pro than they do the X8. And let's look at the X8 stance. You have those four feet on the very bottom protecting the sensors, which is great. The back are off the ground, elevated higher than the Mavic Pro. 
you have the front arms which seem to be lower designed so it's kind of the opposite of the Mavic Pro the front arms are higher on the Mavic Pro the back are lower you have those two feet in the back those make contact with the ground but it's not great for taking off in the grass one thing I noticed about this design was that it left the gimbal in the grass on takeoff now as far as the charger goes this one charges the battery faster which is amazing because it is a bigger battery this one charges at max output of about 3 amp during your charge rate the Mavic Pro charger only charges 50 watt at 1.4 amps. That's the max rate of amps that you can get. It will slow down at the very end of the charge as well. I want to get back to the noise level comparing the X8 to the Mavic Pro because that's a concern for some of you guys. And the X8 is quieter than the Mavic Pro with the stock props on there. Let me throw up the wavelengths in my timeline editor. Both are recorded at exactly the same sound level on my GoPro Hero Black, so the Femi is a bit quieter. But where the Mavic beats the Femi, even though it is quieter, the return to launch is almost absolutely perfect for the Mavic Pro. Both compasses were calibrated. The Femi landed just to the right of the pad, and the Mavic Pro landed right on the spot where it took off on the X. But that's about it for this review and I've gone over a lot of pros and cons, compared the cameras, the batteries, the remotes, everything in the package that you get with the X8 versus the Mavic Pro. The Mavic Pro does have some extra additional beneficial features like OcuSync and some extra flight modes that the Femi does not. But honestly, when I'm out and shooting, a lot of times I'm shooting cinematic stuff and I'm not actually using the modes. So the modes are kind of gimmicky in my opinion, like rocket mode and spiral and all that stuff. It's not really what you're going to use day to day, honestly. Also, the fact that neither of these drones really have side to side object avoidance. So using those modes, you're kind of putting yourself and your drone at risk in different areas that you fly. If you're way high up in the air, you're fine. Uh, if you're low to the ground doing those modes, you're taking a risk of hitting a tree without having total object avoidance in a 360 on that drone. So um, keep that in mind. But I think that the video looks great for the X8. I am very happy with the return to home. It landed within five feet of the pad and this is the return to home video right here. I think that the richness of the camera and the detail that I'm getting close to the ground is great. The color saturation looks beautiful. Uh, over there on the farm we filmed on, the reds really pop, the greens pop, and on a clear day, if it's a little bit hazy, this one has less performance than the Mavic Pro, but you can also get, uh, hopefully coming up soon, you can get some type of lens filters for the Femi X8 SE edition. Uh, I'm hoping those will come out soon. If they do come out, I will let you guys know and I'll post a link, but I'm pretty happy with what I have here. I think that around the $400 value, this is crazy awesome for $400. This is the drone that the guy walking into Best Buy was asking for um, two years ago saying, hey, can I spend $500 and get a 4K drone? That answer used to be no, but in 2019, the answer is yes, you actually can get one for under $500 now with 4K. And the camera looks decent, honestly. So let's go. The Femi X8 definitely has a rating of 4.8 stars out of five. Not perfect, but very close to it.